Mazzy lovers, welcome back to my channel, Mix Mazda Valleys. Well, following on from my recent video where we had a lot of uh, slug damage in this greenhouse, I've made a few changes and I'd just like to thank the local growers who follow my channel, who grow Mazzy's, who've supported me. You've been absolutely brilliant. Um, one guy told me that uh, I needed to raise my pots up onto uh, wire mesh. I told him that I was going to get some as soon as I can get out and find something. Within an hour, he brought enough uh, mesh, as you can see, to do every one of my trays. So all the mazes now are off the ground and are raised up on, I'd call it a wire mesh tray. Uh, brilliant much appreciated for that and what I've done in it I've uh, obviously chucked a few pellets in underneath by using the mesh as he said it's excellent for drainage on your Mazda Valleys and it gives good airflow underneath the pots which I probably wasn't giving them before but I can clearly see what's in the trays now so if there's any slugs in there I can get rid of them. Also, I've tried over the last two nights, I've tried different methods, um, what people recommended. I watched Ed's video the other day on using the beer traps. Well, Ed, it did work. I found about five slugs in the beer, but I'm going to try something else and what else I've tried. I think is a lot better. Um, I also tried somebody recommended using ground coffee around the plant. Believe me, that doesn't work. I tried it. I came in late at night with a torch and I seen a slug just climbing over the coffee on his way to um, have his supper. So RT went. Somebody else told me to use um, ground eggshell. Um, saying that they won't, slugs and snails won't go over eggshell, yes they will, I also tried that and in fact that can be a bit worse sometimes because um, if you don't clean the eggshell and you leave any of the, um, the white of the egg in, I forgot what it's called now, albinium, albinium, something similar to that, slugs and snails will eat it. So what did I finally use on these mazzies and what have I put together today? Well the viewers, sorry the local growers dropped me off some uh, diatomaceous earth um, which is a silica dust really, it's a fossil based all grind down, you can hardly see it, it looks like talcum powder. Um, in fact one of the lady growers local to me uh, drop me this off let's try and get it in if I can get it in shot diatomaceous earth avoid inhalation by using a dust mask during application which I did I sprayed it all round the back of the shelves um, and I've even sprayed it on the plants you can see it um, around this plant down the bottom and on some of them leaves there it's only a fine dust. The only downside to using, uh, we'll call it DE from now on because that's a mouthful, diatomaceous all the time. DE is when it gets wet, it's not as successful. So every time you water, um, you're going to have to do it again. But now I'm watering these probably every two, every three days while the weather's like this. I haven't got such a problem, but because it's a dust, a fine spray, it's easily done. You just get an applicator, dust it around, put your mask on, spray it on the leaves, spray it on your shelving, and hopefully, hopefully, it'll get rid of your problem. Um, the guys that I know, um, let me try and put this down, uh, put, that on, put that on the floor. Um, a guy dropped me this off, some di diatomaceous earth in a tub. 
Um, they also dropped me off an applicator, which is just like a pump applicator. I'm not going to use it because I haven't got a mask on at the moment. But you just fill it up, pump it round, round the back of your shelves, on your leaves, and around the base of your plant. And it does a decent job. But not only that, <laughs> not only that, another grower dropped me another another pump spray off, which is um, similar. You just pump it like a concertina, and that pumps it round. And another grower lent me this one. This is what he uses. You fill the the bulb with uh, DE. And again, dust all around. So I was quite impressed with that. I don't know if other growers use it. I don't know if you've used it on your orchids or in your garden. But um, for me, it's uh, doing the job because I don't want any more of this. I just want my uh, mazes to be uh, slug and snail free. So I know it's only a short video. It's just my outcome of what I'm going to use. And I know a lot of viewers on my channel, I've had a lot of calls from growers who's got the same problem um, in their greenhouse, in their grow space with slugs and snails at this time. The, the external weather is not helping because it's so wet outside. Um, you're going to get slugs and snails coming in. But by using that silica dust, it seems to have uh, deterred them because when I came in last night, there was no slugs in here but um, I appreciate all the help everybody's given me I hope this has been useful to other people to other growers who's probably got the same problem the rack idea is a fantastic idea I'd never thought of that I had them on the wooden slats to raise them up at different levels there again I wasn't allowing good drainage and I wasn't allowing air circulation under the pots but as you can clearly see, I am now. Um, this slug pellets in, I've put plenty of slug pellets in, look, just chuck them in. I don't rate slug pellets because, like you say, they get damp and that's not much cop. But yeah, if you're gonna, if you've got a problem, give uh, Demacious oil, earth, sorry, a go. Um, I haven't had a problem last night, I so say I'm going to monitor it for the next couple of nights. But you can see I've clearly dusted all the plants now, it's nearly... I don't know if you're going to see that in there, but I've dusted a lot of plants. Um, and uh, the ones I dusted on a trial, I've never got slugs on and I had slugs on them before, so... Yeah, it may well work. But if you're going to use it, don't forget, wear a mask. Um, I don't want anybody getting any uh, silica on the lungs or on the chest. But I hope you found that a bit useful. I've only done a short video on it. I'm sure somebody will do a better video on uh, diatomaceous earth than me. But I've done it out there quick to get to, so my viewers know what I've used and what they can use. Because I don't want that to happen to anybody else's orchids. Slugs and snails are a pest, and actually, if you read on the internet what um, diatomaceous oil earth can do, it's good on a lot of insects that, as orchid growers, suffer. Um, mealybugs is one of them. So, you know, look it up. By all means, look it up on the internet, see what you think about using it. But I've found it to be really good at the moment but that's only one night but I wanted to get this video done to uh, the people that's helped me out over the last uh, few days all the local growers I really do appreciate the local um, orchid community because there's nothing worse than seeing what you put all your effort into just being eaten by a pest that nobody wants anyway so I'll leave you now. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found it useful. Um, until next time, I'll probably do a, an update video when I've got something to show you really. I want me slug free. 
But um, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next one. Bye for now.